Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hard Truth Inside the Football Industry podcast with me, Philip Heidson, and a happy Derek McAnthony, I think, this week, <laughs> <laughs> chairman and co owner of Peter Reunited. Uh, seven Heaven is lovely. Seven nil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, listen, love, love score lines like that. I mean, I think we once beat Akron in 8 2. I think we beat Bradford 7 0 or whatever it was a few years ago. Uh, listen, it was a good day for both of us. Yeah. So we won. You won, like we were moaning last week, and very despondent football fans. And that's the beauty of football, Mm -hmm. isn't it? It's one result to the next. But I think after the kind of a sticky run we've had, it was nice to see the response that the players were hungry. It was like the first 15 seconds we had to post. So I kind of knew. The manager said to me on Friday, we're going to win. He he was very, you know, we'd had a couple of really good days after the shitty Tuesday night result against Blackpool, which was a bit of a defensive horror show. But, you know, we've had injuries. We've lost some very important players. And it's kind of... I've said this all along, it would be survival of the fittest. You know, those yeah. you're hearing about now teams, Akron and losing loads of players, yeah. this team losing loads of players. Whoever can keep people fit have got a real good chance. And we lost probably the best central midfielder in the league after winning six in the spin. And then we won one or two and eight or whatever that followed. So oh, that's Jack Taylor. Yes, and I dare say if he'd been involved, we'd probably be eight points clear in League One right now. Mm-hmm. So that's the importance. But then again, it can take squad players time to adjust. And Louis Reed, God bless him. You know, he's not played as much. He's played twice in that run, including Saturday, and we've had two clean sheets and two wins. And I, I said to the gaffer on Friday as well, you've got to be as good as you can be. and Because I can be critical. Yeah. And I can tell him too, I don't think you were very good tonight. It's not just the team. You know, your subs, your, you, the way you mm-hmm. responded in the game. And we had a really honest chat after Tuesday. And I said on Friday, we need you to be the best you can be for the next nine, ten games. And, um, and I said, I know everyone's questioning our character, but I want you to remind everyone, and it's really important for the players to know this, is that you don't become the number one team in the EFL for coming from behind to win. And we are. We've done it seven times. Yeah. No one else is close to us. You don't do that by chance, and you don't do that by fluke. And you certainly can't have your character questioned, or your bollocks questioned, mm-hmm. or your mentality questioned when you're number one for that stat. I always say stats, data, yeah. window to the soul. Yeah. So as shabby as we might have been in a few games... And we have been. Saturday was a great chance for the players to kind of go, okay, you're all questioning us. Now we've got a chance to respond. And look, it's massive next week. We've got players coming back fit. Mm-hmm. You hope to get through Easter weekend in a good way in the league and in a good way injury-wise. And then you've got seven games to go. So, yeah. you know, we got Fleetwood away. Yeah. Never really done great there. Um, tough trip. Um, Monday, we got Sunderland. So... Yeah, that's, that's a big it, one. It, it, it's mad. You know, the mm-hmm. league's mad. But someone said to me, I got a, a message off the editor of The Athletic, he's a pal of mine. And he said, you know, you're getting nervous. And I was like, no. I said, because this time last year, it was all taken away. You know, we, we weren't allowed, yeah. you know, win or lose on the pitch. So I said, I'm, I'm okay. You know, I'm fine. You know, I'm not getting nervous. I'm enjoying it. It's why it's in your own hands. Yeah, you know what? Absolutely. Well, look, yes, we can play to win promotion or we yeah. can play to do whatever, but we can do it without a vote. Yeah. There's no fucking, there's no assholes basically voting for their mm-hmm. own, you know, prerogative. Um, you know, this time we can do the business on the pitch or we won't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to be the leading goal scorers in England, to have the golden boot leader, yeah. all the things you want to tick off, you know, we've done all right. Uh, and, and probably one of the best things as well is like, we have a young player called Harrison Burrows and, you know, he's committed because Dembele was missing. Mm-hmm. Dembele statistic is, is probably in top yeah, three you know, players in League One. When I saw who scored and I didn't see him on the score sheet, yeah. I didn't know at the time he wasn't yeah, playing. he didn't play. Yeah. Yeah. And Jack Taylor's not playing, so yeah. we're missing some serious strength there. And young Harrison, I was talking earlier about how young players can... Baz always says, young players can make you look like a fucking idiot. Where you look at a young player and go, oh, fucking no chance. And three years later, they're like top class. Yeah. And, and I can only do this as a comparative... A year ago, 15 months ago, we went to Rotherham. Mm-hmm. And Rotherham were a really physical team. It was over Christmas. And they were just so physical. They, we had three 17-year-olds in the team. Harrison was one of them. Mm-hmm. And we got battered. And they beat us 4-0. It was just set piece after set piece and easy. And young Harrison was like, he was like a little, I don't know, call him a weakling or a weed. Oh, you know what I mean? At the time, yeah. you know what I mean? He's a silky player. Yeah. And then you come forward to this time. And one of the biggest improvements for him has been his physicality. Yeah. He's filled out. He's gone through that puberty. He's now mm-hmm. looking like a man. He, <clears throat> he can hold his own. He can stand his ground. And, and it's given him that physical ability. It's given him the confidence to then use his skills. Yeah. And he just looks at home. He knows he can stand up for himself. Now. Correct. And he looks like a proper League One player. Yeah. And to, give a, to say that about a 19-year-old, you can't give him a better compliment. Mm-hmm. So, and then you've got obviously other players we have that are similar age. And you're looking at them going, they're men now. 
Yeah. And I, you know, I'm really excited about that next year. We haven't had a golden generation of Peter Prefer probably since Barry was managing when you had Etherington and Davies and yep. who are now coaching our youths. And you know, our youth team just won the got to the League Cup final. They're already into the fourth round of the FA Cup mm-hmm. with all the big boys. You know, they've won their league title. That's the other batch coming through. We really have a golden generation of young players coming through that excites me more than any promotion. Um, because there are, you know, I've, I've blown up our youth players before, like hyped them up. Yeah. They, there's some serious talent. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, look, we'll see where it goes. Easter weekend is going to be exciting. Um, and, it's, and, it's where, you know, promotion pushes are made or lost, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, well, you could say that, but I, I honestly think this is going for the last few yeah. minutes of the season. I do. I, regardless of this weekend, I do. My team could win, lose, we're still in it. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of teams in it. Portsmouth are now showing yeah. form under the counties, you know. Uh, Gillingham are the dark horses in League One. I was messaging with Steve Evans over the weekend. He was, he was like, oh, I want to try and do you a favour against Grant McCann. I'm like, fuck off you. I said, you still fancy the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they have, they respond against big teams really well. Um, it's a really fascinating league. So, and, and same in your league as well. Now it's, yeah. it's like, you, you know, you're, uh, you're there, they're about six points out. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Last week I'd given up on the playoffs, <laughs> you know, after we hadn't won in five. And, um, you know, we beat Colchester at the weekend and looked good for it. Um, you talk about kids, you know, we've got another young kid that's coming through the youth team who is only his second start. You know, scored a screamer from 20 yards. Brilliant. Who I think a lot is expected of him. Um, they say he's probably the best finisher, if not one of the best finishers at the club. And Good. so it was really great for him to... I look forward uh, to having him next year. Yeah, it's Clayton Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> his name's Clayton Donaldson. <laughs> uh, I saw the goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I was on with my gem scout today, mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about where he was watching this weekend mm-hmm. and the weekend afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was good to see him because... As you know, you know, you put youth players in and people mm. are going to be sceptical and to be able to pre- at least get something and, I mean, hit the bar in the second half Brilliant. as well. So it looked good. Like you say, six points, um, six points off the playoffs Nine still with a few in, few in hand. Yeah. Well, not in hand, I don't think we've got now, but still plenty of time to make up the, uh, it's a weird the difference. Again. Like, you know, right. look at Saul for the big spenders. I mean, you guys are pretty much neck and neck with mm-hmm. them. It'll be like, there's nine games to go. I looked at that table the other day, the League Two table, and there's seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten teams. You just don't... Anyone puts a win a run now together of five wins in a row, mm-hmm. it's all better yeah. off. You don't know where you're going to be in five, six games. I mean, you look at a team like Stevenage, mm-hmm. you know, Stevenage who should have been relegated last mm-hmm. year and were able to get out of that situation. Yep. Didn't necessarily look like they were going to do much better this Started year. Started awful this year. Mm-hmm. And now they're 12th or 13th, and mm-hmm. they've been on a run, and they've gone all the way back up to mid-table. It's form. Yeah. You know, it's 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 form. It's it's when a team gets in that frame of mind, and I and I'd like for us to like have a long run. You know what I mean? Because that's what you want. Where players feel unbeatable. Yeah. Or whatever else. So it, it, there's something to be said about confidence. Yeah. You know, whatever happens, I just want us to go in with momentum to the end of the season. Because sure. you know, you always find that 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 even no matter how much change you have and churn in the summer sure. that momentum, either positive or negative, typically yeah. spills over to the start of the next season. Listen, we got back probably. 15 podcast episodes ago you were yeah. worried about the National League yeah so you know it's, it's I'd rather be where we are now than where we were in yeah, December big steps forward right mm-hmm. so no I think Bradford's in a good place you talk about Salford so um, you know I think just as we were recording last week they um, sacked broke, Richie yeah. Wellens yeah. and now they've signed Gary Boyer mm. which I've got my own thoughts about that mm. but you know well what, he was at your place mm-hmm. he beat us when you, you you know you beat us I was in Dubai at the time yeah. but everyone beats us when I'm in Dubai um yeah, no, that was a strange one. I mean, Wellens has won promotion from that league. Yeah. And I don't know what's going on at Salford. I, I was on BBC Five Live, the podcast I do with them, and the, the conversation turned to that. And I was just like, you know, I know Gary Neville really well. And um, they have high expectations. There's mm-hmm. obviously something not quite right with what was right. going on with Wellens. So a something style must have, issue. I don't know what it was. Something must have irked him to make that decision. So he's doing, and, and, and it looks to me like that's a caretaker thing till the end of the season. It's, it's strange to me that Gary Boyer would then give up, you know, because he got sacked by us. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we were all pretty happy to see that yeah. the day that that happened. Uh, got himself a good gig at Derby and was doing really well at that. So I'm surprised he walked away from that. Derby's uncertain at the moment. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on with Derby, you know what I mean, with the ownership behind right. the scenes. So he probably thought, well, if that ownership thing continues to the summer yeah. and Derby cut loads of people. Yeah, then maybe that's he's one your of system's going to be. Like, you, you could be losing your job. Yeah. Um, so I would imagine they've weighed him in at Salford he probably knows them that's why mm-hmm. they've picked him 
and he's probably just been brought in look give it a go steady the ship with one eye on let's hope we can start winning again and obviously mm-hmm. it didn't start well on Saturday did it so it's an interesting one. no it's uh, it's very pragmatic is his style of football yeah, okay. so I, I remember he's a good friend of my manager's yeah my manager gets on really well with him and his wife they're, mm-hmm. they're like both couples are very close yeah so. I mean he seemed like you know the nicest bloke yeah you know you wanted him to succeed but yeah you know Playing dull football is okay if you're winning every week. Kind of okay if you're winning every yeah, week. Yeah, and it's but, still even then it's not. Yeah, you but know, when I, you're not. I'd rather be, as I've always alluded yeah. to, 5-4, 6-3, 7-0. Yeah. You know, they're, they're the kind of games I like to watch. Mm-hmm. You know, I watch football for goals. Yeah. I don't watch football for clean sheets. I know goalies will hate me saying that. Yeah, boy, your ball kind of borders all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ball, boy, your ball, stop. It borders all the tears. <laughs> it's like, my God, but Gary's no, got no chance. But you don't have to play them, do you, in the running? Yes. Oh, you just know he's going to fuck you. Oh, yeah. You just know. It. And you know what? They're going to play like Real Madrid that day. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> the most, boy, ball, the most expans- <laughs> expansive attacking football oh, you've seen all season. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. Um, <laughs> so I want to thank producer Henry. He's put some p- topics together. We've, we've put the oh, uh, he- Henry in the uh, in control of our narrative for this yeah. week. And one of the things that came up was um, in Serie A in Brazil, actually, yeah. Brazil Serie A, they're introducing a new rule where clubs can only make one managerial change a season. Mm. How would you feel if that was introduced to the EFL? Wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Jesus. I mean, there's one thing having salary caps and everything else, but now you know you own a business and someone's telling you how to fill the groceries on your shelf. I mean, it's like, um, yeah. I mean, no, I don't. Look, that's the most important job. So if you end up with a wrong one at your club, an yeah. absolute fucking disastrous manager, yeah. what are you meant to do? Go out of business until a right. year later? You can't do anything about it. I mean, no. That 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 for me is a, is a big no-no. Absolutely. I'd have to see all the terms and conditions attached to that, but it's <laughs> fucking lunacy in my opinion. <laughs> so it's not going to fly in the... Not uh, for me, no, absolutely not. I mean, what happens if your manager is not well? Yeah. What happens if your manager wants to go to another club? Yeah. What, you know, when he's unhappy, what if you just have a fallout with your manager? And then he just decides to be self-destructive for the rest of the season because he knows he's like guaranteed to kick. I'm not saying any manager would do that, but like, I don't know. It's No, I would hate that. Talking international football, Ireland lost to Luxembourg. Disgraceful. Yeah. What do you make of... uh... Shocking. I know Kenny was a brilliant manager, uh, Mm -hmm. Stephen Kenny at Dundalk. I know he had... There was a lot of good things about the way they played, the success they had. Disaster as an international manager so yeah. far. I feel terrible saying that. I don't want to like kick someone when they're down. I don't know what the FAR are doing, um, because the last campaign was shite, and now this mm-hmm. one started the same. You you got to you've got to um, smell the temperature in the room, and the temperature in that squad's obviously like fucking shit fest. Yeah, is obviously an issue between the players and the coaches and the manager. You know, you're not losing to Luxembourg unless you want the manager sacked. Right. Um, I look at the squad. I look at the age of some of the players, and I'm thinking, well. Are they going to be any good in the World Cup campaign? Mm-hmm. Do you need 33-year-olds now? Right. Is it not time to start fresh? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and whenever I look at that sometimes, awful. But then again, forget the manager for a minute and whether he's a good manager or a bad manager internationally, the fucking players, uh, disgrace. I mean, hang your heads in shame. No disrespect, but you're losing to Luxembourg. Mm-hmm. As bad as it's been, and we haven't, we've hardly scored goals in the last 10 games, um, that's a disgrace. You have to apply yourself. I mean, that is like a horror show, that result. I mean, that is like Premier League losing to a non-league yeah. team. If you look at it, like Luxembourg are what, part-timers? Yeah. It's like losing to Gibraltar, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, yeah, I'm not impressed with that or the whole thing going on with the Irish team. That needs a complete reset. They ain't qualifying for the World Cup. So, if you're not going to qualify for the World Cup, and that's next year or whatever else, why bother calling up players over 32, yeah. 33? Are they going to the Euros with you in four years? Or are they fuck? Start fresh, go again. Bring another manager in. Get the kids. You know, kids, whatever you got to do. Yeah. Retire a few people, give them yeah. their goodbye in the next international friendly and move on. Mm-hmm. And that's what you got to do sometimes. Do you know what I mean? And you got to be ruthless and cutthroat. And they need a manager with a plan. Uh, and they need a good manager. And, and there's a few out there. But he was obviously, I don't know if he's out of his depth or what the story is, but an absolute horror show. And I feel for him because he looks like a man under serious pressure. And I'm sure he's missing club football. Would you hire from club football in Ireland or would you cast a wider net? I don't think that's the problem. I, I, you know, I'm not digging out the Irish league because it's, it's improved immensely over mm-hmm. the last few years. Um, and he was a good call. He was a good choice because his record, his pedigree was unbelievable. But for whatever reason, it just hasn't gone over well. You know, that bridge from, from Irish club football 
to international football, whether it's because he doesn't know the players in the UK and he hasn't yeah. managed in the UK and he's not dealt with those egos. Mm. And I don't know, you know, but they really need to. The next one's the most important one because this one's been poor. Yeah, um, yeah no, no, I'm, I'm not... I'm concerned about Irish football. Is there a talent problem or is it just the picking players? I don't think players? it's a talent problem. I, I look at the under-21s, I look at some of the young players, I look at some of the players in the UK, I look at players like Jack Taylor, right. who plays for us. Mm-hmm. If he can't walk into that centre midfield, and he still, I think he was called up by their under-21s all the time, I mean, he should be pulling the strings in that midfield. Mm-hmm. That's how good he is. Mm-hmm. And if he can't get in that Irish midfield at the moment, um, you know, I feel bad for him. So... There are plenty of players. I mean, you, you look at Conley at, at Brighton, the young striker. I mean, this, you know, Parrot at Tottenham. Yep. I mean, alone, attack-wise, yep. there's some talented players. But if you set up in a stagnant way where players are bored and, and all they want to do is play tippy-tappy football, mm-hmm. so you think that's what works, so that's the way to go. I mean, we've got pace, we've got power up front, we've got youth. Yep. We've got, I could name, there's, an, there's a boy at Southampton as well as another young player. I mean, there's four or five young players that we should be going, that's what we're building the team around. Mm-hmm. You know, that. Forget about you know your usual old servants or whatever else. It's not yeah. going to help us in the Euros in four yeah. years' time. So it's got to be a complete rebuild. And and it's got to be probably with a fresh new manager. Now, if he goes on to turn it around, I'll be the first to apologise. But I don't think it's going to happen. Not a great start. Not a great start. No, awful. So uh, kind of on the thread of international football, uh, a lot of international teams this week have worn T-shirts about human rights in Qatar Seen before it, yeah. the World Cup. Seen uh, I think Zlatan also criticised footballers. Um, on the other hand, making public statements, saying they should concentrate on their football. Yeah. He fell out with LeBron James. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which side of that divide do you stand? It's a tricky one, isn't it? You know, because they're all going to Qatar. No yeah. one's going to miss it. Right. You know, if they all want to give it the what for, don't go. Yeah, no one's going to point out going to a World Cup, I don't think. Correct. So what's the point in wearing a T-shirt? Yeah. What do you think Qatar is going to do over the next 18 months? Yeah. They're going to do fucking nothing. I'm one of those people, I don't do virtue signaling. And there's been a lot of virtue mm-hmm. signaling going on over the last 12 months. And I'm always one of those, I'm a doer, not a talker. So if you want to do something, okay, get the best five players in the world to agree not to go to the World Cup mm-hmm. and come out now and tell them. Yeah. You know, we're the best 10 players. And then all the sponsors and the viewing figures might look at it and go, shit, this is going to be a terrible World Cup. Mm-hmm. So if that's how you want to prove your point. There's never a solution with the virtue signaling. It's always like, well, we're going to wear a t-shirt or we're going to do this. Okay, what's your solution? Yeah. So I can feel good about myself continuing to go through with it anyway. Yeah, of course, everyone's wearing it because it's great. And it's you know, and I guess lots of players now have stopped taking the knee because they felt the same way. And I've been saying this for a while. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, change needs change, but it needs action. Uh, so if you're going to come out about the, the Qatar World Cup, great, have a spokesperson come out with 10 things you want to see happen. Otherwise, these players aren't going. Yeah. That's change. Yeah. Standing there with T-shirts on is just virtue signaling. So, um, you know, as for players being political and sports people, that's just the modern way now, isn't it? They all... They, they're everyone's drinking, got an opinion. They're drinking the Kool-Aid, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They're all on board for it. But I've always said everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Yeah. So whether you're a guy who sells houses, whether you're a sports personality... You have an opinion? Fine, no problem. Um, you're allowed, you're entitled. It's the First Amendment right, mm-hmm. right, in America. Um, so I can't, you know, I, I came out and said Piers Morgan shouldn't have lost his job over not believing Meghan Markle. So I can't criticise uh, uh, LeBron James, yep. you know, because he wants to give it what for in his, in his medium. But I can criticise him for not digging out China, you know, and, and all the, you know, the human rights violations Where you choose that go on to. there, yep. um, while you're going on about everything else. So you can't have it both ways, right? And I always said this, I said to you recently, and we don't want to get too political. If you're out there calling January the 6th insurrection and going on about it nonstop, I want to make sure you did the same when Antifa and BLM were burning down half of America's cities in the summer, you know, and what they were doing, the movements. So, you know, you, you've got to be able to give it both sides. Uh, and that's the way I feel. Uh, and I won't stop feeling that way. Well, coming back home... Yeah. We, we have 17 non-league clubs who have been fined for not Seen fulfilling it. fixtures. Dover had their results wiped out for the season. Seen it. How, I mean, this seems ridiculous given that there's so little funding for them. It sends a terrible message, yeah. doesn't it? And I guess anyone punished during COVID for you know, not fulfilling fixtures. Or, look, I guess it, the flip to it is if you don't set a precedent, if you don't put a marker down, people are going to take the piss. So I understand that too. Mm-hmm. So maybe you find them and tell them you're going to have to pay it over 10 years. Yeah, suspended. Or sus- whatever, something. you know, something. Maybe, you know, the, the punishment's harsh, but we're in real 
serious extreme circumstances at the moment you know what I mean it's like I don't think anyone can argue that it's not like you can't look back and say this season and I hate the word unprecedented yeah but this season was unprecedented yeah it was again unprecedented and and I guess did they get financial help um, I think they got a little, but it wasn't a wasn't, great deal. It wasn't like the top conference clubs who got more money, didn't they? Yeah, I think Dover may have been, I think they may be in the conference, but they were bottom of the conference and said they weren't going to play anymore. Right. Um, so some of them got some So in that help. case, if you're in a conference who did get 20 million or 30 million, mm-hmm. and they would have got that money, well then Dover should have fulfilled the fixtures. If you're in the leagues below and the money was like diluted yeah. and a lot less, you should have no punishment whatsoever. But in Dover's case, if they're in that in that league and they've received a hundred grand or hundred and fifty grand, that they have a right because that's still continuing, isn't mm-hmm. it? Non league yeah. and the conference is still continuing. Conference is still continuing. Yeah, yeah. So you cannot down tools because it suits you. Just because you've had a shit start to the season and you think you're relegated. Yeah. So that that's wrong. And, and there is no relegation because the other season because the levels that's below right, them. yeah, so they're actually not going down. Yeah, so they're so saying it's not even worth playing because there's no relegation. No, because, you know, you've got the the integrity of the competition. Right. So you've been given money. Your league's still going. You're now being saved from relegation. You've got a right to play because you've got mm. top teams to play who are going to win promotion. And, and you know, if, if if one of our rivals was playing at Dover and Dover decided just forfeit the fixture and give them the three points, it's it's it's, it's morally wrong. Yeah. So that's how I feel about that. Lower down, none of those teams should have been punished. Yeah, I know Chester came out and said that um, they were denied the uh, any money from the survival package by Sport England because they're sustainable and they're not in danger. So it's like the means testing. Yeah, I don't believe that. I think it should have been equal. Yeah. I think all the money. You know, I, it's like I read now. I see clubs, people getting dug out, companies and whatever else for for taking furlough money, and I'm like, yeah, fuck, they should drain the government of furlough mm-hmm. money. The government are the ones who are stopping them working or stopping them doing business. Yep. I mean, fucking right they should. I don't give a fuck how rich a company it is. And I've said this since day one. Me and my missus had a debate about it. She's like, well, such and such shouldn't be taken for them. I'm like, fucking right they should. They haven't been allowed to open their fucking restaurants. Yep. They haven't been allowed to open their shop. They, you know, they have been stopped from trading, mm-hmm. restraint of trade. So fucking right if there's a system where they can take some money from the same people who shut right. them down, you take it. You've got a responsibility to find the most effective ways to fund your business. 100%. And, you know, here there's uh, COVID loans in the States Correct. for small businesses. You know, Correct. It's, it's, you're doing a disservice to your business if you don't 100%. look at how you can take that and get 100%. access to that capital. And I have friends who took loans that didn't need them and did yep. them. I could have and I didn't. Yep. But that's me. And I told you I got like a, a, a COVID check from the government and I'm donating that money. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested because I don't need it. Right. You know, there are people who need that money. And I got sent $3,000 and that's stupid, you know, Democrat $2 trillion fucking plan or whatever else. So at a principle, you know, no, people like me shouldn't be getting that kind of money. Um, so, but no, I, I mean, 1 million percent, everyone should be getting help um, if you're being, rest- you know, restrained, restrained from actually trading. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've seen it, more big businesses go on in the last few weeks. Yeah. It's fucking shocking. Now, your friends down the road in Cambridge. Yes. Um, the Cambridge United CEO, Ian Mather, has suggested mm. we're talking about salary caps. Mm. Uh, and what do we do now that mm. who knows what's happening? Um, suggested uh, capping or having salary caps linked to gate receipts. Talking shite. Yeah. Yeah, talking shite. So Sutton United get promoted from the conference and come up with a thousand people. Yeah. Well, that's a sure They're done way. before they've they're even done. started. They're done. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I get everyone wants fiscal responsibility financially. Everyone wants football to stop losing clubs to administration, liquidations, overspending. I get it. People don't want a Salford spending millions because they're owned by billionaires and millionaires. However, that's the prerogative, yep. you know, if they're paying their bills. And I've never had a problem with anyone paying their bills. Yes, you've had shysters involved in football. And I haven't named any there, but there have been shysters mm-hmm. in, in other situations with clubs. I'm not sure why he's saying that because that if Cambridge United got promoted, they haven't got the biggest crowds. Mm-hmm. That would be that would put them at a massive disadvantage in League One. I mean, it, it would pretty much see them suffer in League right. One. You know, if they came out and was like, you can only spend a percentage of your crowd. And then what happens in times with like what we've seen with COVID when you've got no crowd? Right, no so one can spend anything. Yeah, so I don't know. He's not really checking the temperature in the room. Obviously, when he's come out with that, maybe he's been misquoted. It makes no sense. So I like the salary cap. I know it's gone. We're going to have to go back to. Um, uh, the percentage turnover, mm-hmm. you know, and, and whatever, and that's the way it's going to have to be. Yeah. Um, but look, we all know fiscal. There has to be fiscal responsibility in football, um, but it has to be realistic. And I'm, for me, that's not realistic. Yeah. All right. Well, that's really what we had on the docket for what's going on uh, this week. We have a few questions from listeners. We will go into a short break, and we'll come back with those in a second. 
Hi everybody, welcome back to the pod. We got some listener questions uh, coming up. And uh, first is from Michael, who is a posh fan. Michael asks, um, what happens to the London Road stand if you get promoted to the championship? Funny enough, I've got a lot of documents here. I've been sent over to sign as regards to the stadium purchase um, by my partners. What happens to the stand? Yeah, we'd obviously look to get in temporary seating. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we don't want to like spend silly money. Um, we want to go up to the champ. And we want to be there for a while. Yeah. So we're probably going to have to do something with that stand. There won't be immediate building. It will be temporary bolt-in seats, I'd mm-hmm. imagine, for as cheap as possible, just to make sure that we have that capacity. Because if we lose it, we're going to be under 10,000. And we don't want to be, you know, when you're going up to the champ and you yeah. can have a Newcastle in there. Yeah. You're going to be filling that. You want to you want to fill every single. Yeah, one. I mean that could be like eighty grand a pop you're yeah. losing if you if you can't. So you know it's a good question. We've served our time where we're allowed dispensation for okay. extra. We can't do it anymore. We've done three years. So you have now, to get seats in there if you what get. We might do here. because of COVID and everything going on. Maybe someone can feel sorry for us and give us one more year, mm-hmm. and that would be fucking nice. We'll ask the question. Yeah, but otherwise you have to seat it if we have to. Our if you were in that fortunate position where you yep. uh, get promoted. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so Martin, who's a Celtic fan, sure. says with CEO Peter Lowell, yep. or perhaps that's not how you pronounce it, but that's what I went with, with him leaving this year, he wants to know what your experience is of working with him in the past. I've had no direct contact with him, just mm-hmm. Barry and him, and I've, you know, fax or, or sorry, email offers and stuff like that. So we've never, Baz has spoke to him a couple of times. I've never dealt with him directly. Yeah. So he's had a very good career there. Mm-hmm. They've had a lot of success. So he's obviously been one of the best CEOs in Scotland. Good luck to him. As he, as, is he retiring? I think so. Good luck I'm to the him. Char. And who would be the top of your uh, manager list for Celtic? Ooh, that's a tough one, you know, because it's such an iconic job. So, um, God, as, as an outside chef and throw one out there, the Barnsley mm-hmm. manager. Yeah. What fucking asset he's become. I mean, the job he's done mm-hmm. with Barnsley, and obviously Barnsley fans dislike me immensely, so they'll dislike me <laughs> even more. But if I were Celtic looking now, going if Barnsley didn't get promoted, I'd be saying, I'd want the Barnsley manager. Yeah. If Brentford didn't get promoted, I'd yeah. want him. Yeah. Because you got style, substance, working with young players. You know, Celtic need a reboot. Yeah. They've had an aging squad. They're, they're losing. Brown's going, and mm-hmm. a lot of older players are going. They're going to have to sell players. They're going to have to generate. They're going to have to rebuild the squad. They've been miles off it this year. Rangers have won the title by a mile. So they need a younger CEO. They need a manager that's a little bit more maybe modern thinking than, say, Lenny was. Mm. Um, Yeah, for me, two of the favourites would be definitely Brentford and Barnsley's managers if they didn't get promoted because there's no way they'd take that job if they got promoted. Yeah, everyone wants to be a Premier League yeah. manager, no disrespect to Scotland. Yeah, and that was kind of my follow-up question. It may seem like it's a stupid question or, sure. um, you know, a very English-centric question. But kind of the attraction of being Celtic manager for a, somebody who's going for a Premier League job or... Listen, it's an iconic job. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you've got a Premier League job, you're going to take it over to Scotland yeah. job. Um, you've got geography, mm-hmm. yeah, particularly if you're British or you're English. Yeah. Um, you know, and also it's usually a two-club league. So, you know, and also the, the sense of expectation of, having, look, Brendan Rodgers rebuilt his career, you know, mm-hmm. after Liverpool, you know, go, he went Liverpool to Celtic, and yeah. then Celtic Leicester. Yeah, yeah, sorry, like a, a brain freeze for a moment. So the disappointment of losing the Liverpool job, he went and took an iconic club on and he had lots of success. And look at what he's doing with Leicester. And if I were any of the top clubs, if Man United or Arsenal were looking for managers this mm-hmm. summer, Brendan Rodgers should be top of their list. Yeah. Um, so... Celtic can be a, a springboard for a massive job or a big job in England, but it's an iconic club. Yeah, it's a tough time now. You've had all that success, and now you've got to stop the Rangers juggernaut from doing the Absolutely, same. Absolutely, because I think Stevie, I think Rangers will win the title for the next two. If they right. keep Stevie uh, G, they'll probably win the title in the next two, three years because Celtic are in reboot mode. Kind of the last question on that that theme, and you talked mm-hmm. about obviously the dominance of Rangers and Celtic yeah. that we all know about. If you were to buy a Scottish league team, do you think you could challenge either those that, that dominance? No. The no. math just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. No, I mean, I, I could try. <laughs> could I take my recruitment policy to an Aberdeen or a Hibs? Mm. Maybe. The crowds are there. Maybe. Quite possibly. But without being a billionaire and having yeah. serious deep pockets and, and pay the wages, you know, that Celtic and Rangers do. Yeah. And there's a big disparity between them and the rest of the clubs. You know, you'd have to be a miracle worker like Alex Ferguson was with St. Yeah. Mirren and Aberdeen yeah. back in the day. Very it's difficult. always just going to be a fight for third. Yeah, very difficult. 
Um, I got a question from producer Henry. I guess his prerogative sure. now that he's putting the question sheet together. Um, so he said that uh, Ricardo Santos has been that Bolton, so he's a Bolton fan, has been their player of the season so far and won the League Two Player of the Month award in February. You know, he says Henry says in his opinion, uh, Santos is too good for League Two. What happened with him at Posh? So we got Rico from Thurrock. We paid like eight grand from. Um, we saw massive potential. He had yeah. the size. He had everything. What he probably was very clumsy mm-hmm. early on, but a lot of young players are clumsy and, and, and accident prone as regards to mistakes. And you get a game where he looked like Bobby Moore, and then yep. you get a game where he, you know, he looked like Reg Varney. So, yeah. you, you know, but again, young player. And I'd say he'd be the first to say also his attitude could have been better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Graham Wesley loved him when he was our manager. We had the Portuguese FA write to us, and everyone always laughs about this about interested in him yeah. quite potentially being called up for the under yep. 21s and then we had a couple of Portuguese club ask for him to go on uh, trial mm-hmm. I was away at the time and everyone was, I saw the facts and everyone was saying I was lying and he then went to Barnet and then he said a few shitty things about our club mm-hmm. when he was at Barnet so he's, he's not a fan's favourite because of the crap he said yeah. he's never apologised and yeah. he should I'm happy he's finally showing he's got um, the ability his mindset's right Mm-hmm. Um, there's no doubt in my mind he could play higher right. he could easily he's play got in the, the championship he has he yeah. has but it was always about has he got that Yeah. Um, so if that is now going with the talent sky's the limit maybe he's grown up mm-hmm. maybe if he apologises to posh fans like he owes them one um, we can forget about what was said but I played a part in getting him from Thurrock yeah. in the middle of fucking nowhere yeah. and you know now he's at a bolt in a massive club and he's, he's got a chance mm-hmm. you're talking about ex-posh players um, we talked earlier about Bradford's run yeah. and you know a lot of our run was to do with Callum Cook, Callum Cook and then Callum got injured and that's when our downturn in form started so you know he's it's taken him a while to get going but mm-hmm. now he's in a kind of number 10 which he wasn't really before you don't play for England under 21s without being a talented kid yeah. or England under 20s and 19s and 18s and he played England every level when we signed him for Middlesbrough and it just didn't work at our place. Mm-hmm. And it happens sometimes. Yeah. And I've read all the comments and I've seen the data because I followed the data. Yeah. And I know he's one of the best midfielders in the league. Yeah. And maybe that playing 10, that free role where he's not under as quick pressure to move the ball passing-wise. Yeah. And, and if he's playing a deep line midfield or he's playing a central midfield, 10 probably suits him because he's got talent, he's got flair, and he can finish. Um, so I always thought if he could add goals and assists as a player, mm-hmm. but I also knew at 22 when he left us, he still had a chance. It's not yeah. over. No, it's still a young age. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he could go again. Yeah. And he's had a massive club, by the way, in Bradford. Yeah. So, you know, there's no reason he couldn't have three, two, three great years with Bradford and then he's suddenly in the top 10 right. of the championship. Yeah, and, and wherever that takes him, you know, because when he came over, he was playing more of a, a deep line, like a number four, and it just really wasn't... He wasn't a four. He's yeah. not a six either. No. He's an eight or a 10. You know, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the one credit I give him is when he left us, he took a pay cut to go to you. Yeah. And that for me, always give, I always give players a lot more room when they take pay cuts. Yeah, it's the desire to yeah, succeed. I, I have a lot of respect for players yeah. who do that. You know what I mean? And they probably get more patience from me when I see a player doing that. Rather than just sitting out and waiting the contract to go Correct. down. And he didn't make any, he didn't ask for us for any money. Mm-hmm. He did it the right way. So yeah. fair play to him. I'm glad Good. he's doing well. All right, well, that's it for this week. Um, well, listen, before we go, yeah. hardtruthbusiness.com. Subscribers are growing. It's We're having our first Zoom call this yeah, week. Yeah, we're doing our first people, investment yeah. pitch. Yeah, people there. are going to be in, in pitching for investments off me and, and for some money. And we're all talking every day. I post videos on there and yeah. videos of my life. And it's really great. And it's, it's, it's a good subscriber service. Go to hardtruthbusiness.com for more information um, uh, if you need anything email Phil as well yeah. um, it's at contact at hardtruthbusiness.com um, it's a bargain you know like we said we, we set it up so that um, it wasn't necessarily about the cost nope. it was um, you know you, you always need a commitment from both sides Correct. for something like that to be successful so, and so, far, so you good. know if you're not in there then uh, take a look absolutely um, from a football perspective of course we're always interested in your questions so send those over those are going to go now to me and Henry um, those you can go to hardtruthfootball.com slash contact and fill in the form alright guys until next week take care